presence of a new Ogoni led for the benefit of the Ogoni people and Nigeria as a whole. Strategic East West road in the Niger Delta to be delivered, just as President Buhari promised his support to resettle internally displaced persons in Borno State. <laughs> government establishes links between recent violent attacks and sponsors. The IMC held several meetings and took concrete steps in developing a framework for the asset disposal process. Plus, another round milestone in the anti-corruption crusade as government engages values of looted assets for sale. Hello, this is NTA Network News. We are live in Abuja. I am Juma Yusuf. Adiola Kame Akere joins us from our Lagos studio, while Mohamed Ibrahim will be joining us later from Medjugorje. Thanks for joining us. Let's begin. The east-west road, a vital artery of development to Avatan, the Ogoni land, is to be completed under the Presidential Infrastructure Development Fund. President Mohamed Buhari gave assurance while granting audience to the leadership of Ogoni ethnic nationality, where he said his administration is also committed towards ensuring clemency for the convicted Ogoni indigents following the unfortunate incidents in the 90s to lay the foundation for genuine reconciliation and national integration. State House correspondent Adam Otombo has the details. The creation of the Ogoni leadership led by the president of the Supreme Council of Ogoni traditional rulers, King Godwin Giniwa, was in the State House to show appreciation for the unprecedented efforts at enhancing the development of the area by the Buhari presidency. As Ogonis, we believe in the unity of Nigeria. As our survival is best guaranteed in the larger Nigerian nation, we wish to thank your Excellency, immensely for the commencement of work by the Haru Carbon Pollution Remediation Project on the amelioration and remediation of the devastation caused by years of oil spills in our land. The Ogonis also commended the President for providing the desired political will on the construction of the Bordeaux Boni Road, as well as the tremendous progress achieved so far in building, upgrading, and expanding critical national infrastructure projects, especially roads, railways, and power. If we go into the annals of history, as progress achieved even with new resources, on the resumption of oil exploration activities in our land, we wish to state that we are open to dialogue with the federal government for a mutually beneficial relationship with optimal consideration for the involvement and participation of our Goni people, which will guarantee sustainable progress and ultimate delivery benefits to the generality of the Nigerian Federation. Appreciating the show of support by the Ogonis, President Muhammad Buhari said the rehabilitation of the Niger Delta will continue to be accorded his administration's top priority as more resources are being committed to tackling existing problems, including the launch of the $1 billion oil cleanup exercise. This is to reverse the terrible damage and restore the ecosystem. To ensure the stimulation of economy activities in the Goni land is underpinned by the vast petroleum resources underlying the Goni land and neighboring communities. The NPC is hereby directed to engage all host communities, particularly Ogoni people, to ensure inclusive processes of oil and gas exploration and production is anchored on optimal involvement of host communities. NPDC will lay a broad-based program for the emergence of a new Ogoni land for the benefit of the Ogoni people and Nigeria as a whole. The federal government, the president also said, is committed to ensuring the closure of all issues surrounding the unfortunate incidents of the 1990s that led to the loss of lives of Ogoni sons, as well as what he called the collateral judicial processes that followed. Despite 
the previous circumstances, the federal government will consider the request for the grant of pardon to finally close the Ogumi saga. We are committed to ensuring clemency and national integration. We will take further steps to ensure faithful and speedy execution of the hydrocarbon pollution remediation project so as to restore the environment and enable farming and fishing activities to resume in the affected areas. President Buhari, however, urged Ogoni leaders to sensitize their indices on value of protecting national assets like pipelines and other oil installations, saying willful damages usually create more havoc on their environment and hamper development of the area. From the State House, Adam Musambu, NTA News. Talking bilateral relations, Chinese President Xi Jinping says his country will use the occasion of the 50th anniversary of the establishment of diplomatic relations with Nigeria to promote strategic partnership to new heights. In a letter to President Buhari, Xi Jinping says Nigeria is an important strategic partner of China in Africa and the China-Nigeria cooperation has been the pace setter of China-Africa cooperation. He appreciated President Buhari for his congratulatory letter on the 72nd anniversary of the founding of the People's Republic of China, which came up on October 1. The Chinese leader said he attached great importance to the development of China-Nigeria relations and assured President Buhari that his country would spare no effort in strengthening existing relations. President Muhammadu Buhari has promised necessary support and assistance to Borno State Government as it strives to effectively resettle internally displaced persons in their ancestral homes for a sustainable future. This was while exchanging views with Governor Babagana Umara Zulum on the resettlement plan's sequel to the prevailing peace enterprise in most parts of the state. State House correspondent Adamasambu reports. Without doubt, Borno State is gradually reclaiming its name as the home of peace following the tremendous achievements recorded in the renewed onslaught against terrorism and insurgency. At the last count, nearly 15,900 combatant and non-combatant ISWAP and Boko Haram elements have surrendered as camps of the insurgent groups remain in disarray. Governor Babagana Umar Azulum is here to brief President Muhammad Buhari on efforts by Borno State Government at ensuring the return of internally displaced persons to their ancestral homes. Arrangement has been concluded to ensure closure of all internally displaced persons' camps inside Maiduguri Metropolitan on or before 31st of December 2021. Borno State Government is also making efforts in collaboration with the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs to continue with the repatriation of Nigerians that are living in the Minao camp. Furthermore, on 27th of November, Borno State Government will ensure the resettlement of IDPs that are living in Difa province of Niger to Manipatori. He said, with the restoration of reasonable degree of peace, Malam Fatori, until now completely deserted, will now have its inhabitants back. To this effect, the Nigerian army, the Nigerian military are providing all the needed support to the government of Borno State. I'm pleased to inform you also that the chief of naval staff has ensured the return of naval base to Baga last month. Uh, these are some of the reasons why I came to bring Mr. President, and Mr. President has given me the assurance that he will do everything possible to support the effort by Borno State Government of returning internally displaced persons to their ancestral homes. Governor Zulum said the government and people of Borno State cannot thank President Buhari enough for his genuine commitment to the restoration of peace and stability in the state, as well as the resettlement of the displaced persons. He made a case for sustenance so that the remnants of the terrorist elements now operating in parts of southern and northern Borno are handled appropriately. From the State House, Adam Musambu, NTA News. In other news, 
The federal government says it has established the links between recent violent attacks in the country and their sponsors, promising that in addition to the ongoing trial of Nandikanu, other sponsors too will soon be prosecuted. Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice Abubakar Malani said of this at a special media briefing to intimate Nigerians on the progress in the fight against internal subversive activities. Femi Oku reports. Soon after the re-arrest of Inam Dekanu in June this year, the federal government set up a special presidential ad hoc committee to investigate the rising spate of subversive attacks within the country. The committee, headed by the Minister of Justice and Attorney General of the Federation, had all security agencies in the country as members. This media briefing is therefore an outcome of the various findings of the committee, which the minister says has exposed the activities of Inam Dekanu, Sunday Adeyemi, and their links with their financiers. We also established that Kanu is a member in the subversive activities. He has accomplices in Nigeria and abroad, individual and groups, as well as state and national actors who are aiding and facilitating his campaign against the people and state of Nigeria. On whether the information given by the investigative committee does not preempt the outcome of the trial, of Inam Dekanu, the Attorney General of the Federation explained the findings. The Office of the Attorney General has a constitutional responsibility which is guided by the public interest and I think Nigerians within the context of the public interest are entitled to be carried out as far as the information um, related to what affects their lives, properties and peaceful processes is concerned. The federal government called on some countries who have been found to aid the activities of some of the indicted names to desist in the interest of a larger peaceful cohabitation. In Abuja, Femi Okeu, NJ News. The multinational joint task force is partnering with other national security forces in its area of operations to enhance elimination of the remnants of the terrorist Habanantin in the Lake Chad region. A statement by the Chief of Military Information of the Joint Task Force in, in Jamaina Chad, Colonel Mohamed Dole, indicates that the force commander, Major General Abdul Khalifa Ibrahim, said that this while on operational visit to Chadian Chief of Air Staff, Brigadier General Amri Ahmed Idris at the headquarters of the Chadian Air Force in, in Jamaina Chad. The ongoing tour of strategic military and security formations in the region, Colonel Dole notes, is aimed at exploring support for the multinational joint tax force operations and to stress the need to take advantage of the infight and mass surrendering of terrorists to eradicate terror activities in the area. Senate Committee on Police Affairs has promised more legislative support to the Nigerian police force with hope that going forward all internal security issues would be brought under control. This came at the committee's oversight to the force headquarters and other related ministry and agency. Dayo Ogunshala reports. Arriving into the warm reception of top officers of Nigeria police and members of the Senate Committee on Police Affairs, the motion here is a fact funding one. Based on the provision of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, which empowers the National Assembly to approve expenditure of any kind. So before we do that, we have to make sure that what we, what we provided for in 2021 has been properly utilized. DIG, in charge of Criminal Investigation Department, Joseph Obunike, on behalf of the Inspector General of Police, believes that the ongoing reforms in the force is a product of the support enjoyed from the lawmakers. For me, it's a good move with success and with the National Assembly. Apart from the assessment of police newly acquired operational gadgets, the committee had high level engagements with Minister of Police Affairs as well as Nigeria Police Trust Fund. The 
has recorded over 80% success in the implementation of the 2020 budget. The oversight will assist the community in the 2022 budget scrutiny. In Abuja, Dayo Binshola, NTA News. We'll take a break there, quick break. Don't go away. You are watching NTA Network News. President Mohamedou Buhari is actuated by nothing else than the reign of peace, unity and stability in all parts of the country. The special advisor to the president on media and publicity, Femi Adishina, stated this while receiving an audience, a pressure group under the auspices of Ambassadors of Voice for Change. State House correspondent Adam Asambu tells us more. The Ambassadors of Voice of Change, made up of actors, musicians, comedians, filmmakers, producers and directors, as well as youth, women and student representatives, is a non-governmental organization committed to the unity, peace and prosperity of Nigeria. Spokesman for the group and veteran actor, Zach Oji, flanked by Mr. Ibu and Sani Denja, amongst others, expressed their readiness to collaborate more effectively with the government, security agencies, and indeed Nigerians towards achieving the desired objectives. Most of us are what we are today because we are Nigerians. And we owe this country a duty and a responsibility to ensure that with the things that are happening in Nigeria today, we have come to terms with the fact that there is a need for a new mindset in this country, a new mindset to enable us integrate, come together to promote peace and unity in Nigeria. Commending the Buhari presidency for his efforts at dismantling obstacles to national security and stability, the group is planning, amongst others, road shows, town hall meetings, and rallies to sensitize Nigerians on the imperative of reasoning together for the good of all. As soon as we finish the launch here in Abuja, we will start going from state to state to preach the same message of peace and unity. So we have come great confluence of minds to lead our support to what our father the president is doing so that we together have a win-win situation this is a man who gives direction i see him as the lighthouse in africa the special advisor to the president on media and publicity Femi Adeshina appreciated members of the group for taking the part of honor in support of efforts at achieving a greater Nigeria. We know that there are lots of forces attempting to pull the country apart. But if the country will stay together, and it will stay together, we need initiatives like this, we need voices like this, we need ambassadors like this. It's in our collective interest that Nigeria survives, <coughs> and it survives well. It's in our collective interest that our unity in diversity is maintained. What Mr. President wants is peace, is unity, and whatever it takes for Nigeria to have peace, this country will have it. And we will have it, if necessary, by force. Yes. He promised necessary support of the federal government to the movement describing the initiative as timely and well thought out. From the State House, Adamu Sambu, NTA News. The federal government has achieved another milestone in the anti-corruption fight with the engagement of independent values that are expected to value all forfeited assets of looters for onward sales through auctioneers. The independent values were engaged in a ballot picking to identify the assets expected to be valued. Ilyasu Aliyakubu reports. Perhaps say one of the major factors of underdevelopment in Nigeria has been an act of corruption that has eaten deep into the system. And even when these looted funds and assets are recovered, effective utilization has been another major factor. Since the assumption of office by President Muhammadu Buhari, the narratives have changed for the better. The Chairman Interministerial Committee for the Disposal of Looted Assets and Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Justice, 
Omar Mohammed said, 613 values bidded for develop and underdeveloped property, plants, machinery, motor vehicle, furniture, and equipment. Others are water vessels, jewelry, ornaments, and clothing materials. The IMC held several meetings and took concrete steps in developing a framework for the asset disposal process. Let me then remind successful followers that they will require to exhibit professionalism. What just transpired here is one out of the many series of an unprecedented development in the history of Nigeria being executed by President Muhammadu Buhari as he demonstrates leadership, transparency and accountability in recovery and effective utilization of looted funds in Nigeria. In Abuja, Ilyasu Aliakubu, NTA News. The Kaduna Abuja train is set to resume operations Saturday, 23rd of October, as the damaged track has been fixed. Minister of Transportation Chibuke Rotimi Amechi, while inspecting the site, said 24 hours security patrol will be deployed to the route pending the completion of the digital sensors that will be installed in the track. Oyinaya Kalu Oka reports. Where the damage was carried out, and as you can see, work is ongoing and the damage has already been repaired. With the mobilization of the railway engineers, the track has been laid and sealed up. This is the tamping machine carrying out finishing touches to make sure the track laying is up to standard. Minister of Transportation Chibikiri Tumiyamichi, while at the inspection site, said all is now set for train movements. He disclosed that besides 24 hour security patrol, a sensor will be installed to detect any signals from the track. What is significant is that the, the, the recall was done by our own Nigerian engineers and they have been in record time. By tomorrow, they expect to run the, they expect to run the first train, fasting the process, the procurement process of the digital security system that we want to put in place. Uh, it, it had gone to cabinet two weeks ago and it was returned. So we will present it to cabinet to ensure that we get approval that we can install the digital security network. I think we will try and introduce what we have in the Wadi the, uh, the satellite telephone so that uh, we can communicate at, at every time. The locomotive that was affected, and already my men are working on that. If you go to Idu now, they have dropped most of the components that were affected under it. Train movement for now has been restricted to two return trips from 9.50 a.m. from Idu and 10.35 a.m. from Rigasa. Oyinaya Kalu Oka, LNC News. That's good news indeed. More than 2,000 poor and vulnerable in Tudongwada and Dugwa Federal Constituency of Kano State have been empowered by a member of the Federal House of Representatives and House Leader Al Hassan Adudugwa. Yohannes Hassan Barao has details. I am so happy. I don't even know what to say. Indeed, Safiya Aliyu has every reason to be happy. She is among the more than 2,000 women and youth empowered by the member representing Tudungwada Dogwa Federal Constituency. <laughs> who is full of appreciation for the continuous support by the member in bringing developmental projects to his constituency, said the leadership quality of the member is quite commendable. Al Hassan Adodogua, who sees the gesture, is to reciprocate the support he continually enjoys from his constituents, promises to do more. In the area of health, we have built more than 31 primary health care centers across the federal constituency. You were one time in this constituency, you have gone and you have seen it. I want to say without, of, of, without any fear of contradiction that Allah will continue to give me the resilience, to continue to give me the courage to do more. Those that are benefiting are going to use it judiciously, especially the issue of empowering the youth trying to educate them, to give them the skills before giving them the tools and the money to use. Apart from 70 million naira cash, 1,000 sewing machines, 200 motorcycles, 
41 cows and 2,400 bags of fertilizer were also distributed. While Sophia says she will use the support to venture into groundnut oil business, others like her are optimistic that their life will witness great improvement. In Kanu, Yohana Sahasandawal, NTE News. Let's bring you up to speed with other news as to ensure strong fiscal governance system. Policy experts are advocating complementary reforms that will strengthen formulation and execution of Nigeria's budget. These and other recommendations were reached at a one-day dialogue on fiscal governance and economic resilience in Nigeria, organized by Partnership to Engage, Reform and Learn, per Ekene Ndulu report. Statistics show that Nigeria, with vast human and material resources, ranks highly among countries with high infant and maternal mortality rates, out of school children, high rates of unemployment, and inadequate infrastructure. Major reasons are used for this is the volatility of Nigeria's revenue and expenditure due to heavy dependence on crude oil and mismanagement. Partnership to Engage, Reform, and Learn is a five-year program funded by the UK Foreign, Commonwealth, and Development Office, and they are interested in encouraging growth and decreasing poverty in Nigeria. This platform is therefore created for thought leaders to brainstorm on fiscal governance issues and recommend actionable policy options for policymakers. We also know that Nigeria's fiscal deficit, which is now at more than 6%, has been exacerbated by COVID. So diversifying and increasing non-oil revenue is critical. The states should be investing in their economies to build up their tax base. These experts came up with far-reaching recommendations that will ensure efficient fiscal governance in Nigeria. The use of consultants in the tax regime is detrimental to national revenue drive, and thus there is need to institute a vibrant revenue generation drive by public institutions instead of using consultants. The citizens blame the government for not providing services. The government blame the citizens for not paying taxes. We have to break that vicious cycle by providing appropriate information and make people to realize that we are all stakeholders. It is the hope of these thought leaders that solutions emanating from this dialogue will be adopted by government at all levels in charting a new course for efficient service delivery. In Abuja, Ekene Ndulwe, NTA News. Gombe State Government has resolved to construct 11 model Sangaya schools as part of efforts to integrate the system with formal education. Governor Mohamed Inoua Yahya was set at this at the foundation laying ceremony of one of the schools in Gombe State. The idea is to ensure equity in access to basic education. Abbas Mekano reports. Seven years of successive administrations in the country have made efforts to bring the Sangaya and Majiri education system up to speed with the formal system, but the desired results have not yet been achieved. Gombe State Government under the Inua High Administration, which aligned its idea with the federal government, has a different approach to the initiative by keying into the World Bank assisted beta education service delivery for all, BESDA, which integrates both the Western and Quranic studies under one roof, with the establishment of 11 models and guys schools across the state with hostels and staff quarters, among other facilities. <laughs> so many school, formal and non-formal centers on their BESDA, and I've seen what they are doing. They are doing wonderfully well. The two-day interactive session is to improve the capacity of the Sangai Islamic teachers and other stakeholders to meet the teaching needs of 21st century to better the Sangai education in Gombe State. Abbas Mekano, NTA News. For more on NTA Network News, let's join Adela in our Lagos studio for more. Hello, Adela. Hello, Juma. Now, while 
the Nigeria Customs Service is intensifying its anti-smuggling drive. There are increasing worries on the issue of ambush attacks on its officers. This trend is what the acting controller of the Federal Operations Unit Zone A, Hussein Ejibunu, says will not be condoned as the service will activate Section 197 of the Customs and Excise Management Act, which empowers it to bear arms. Michael Olaleye reports. This is the aftermath of the October 16 attack on customs officers while trying to retrieve 24 vehicles laden with bags of smuggled rice along the Abeokuta Shagamo interchange. This patrol vehicle was not just riddled with bullets, but two officers were left injured. Although the customs succeeded in recovering a sizable number of the small good bags of rice, but the development is giving sleepless nights, especially for the acting controller who wondered why criminals could launch such an offensive attack on legitimate officers. And I repeated it to the traditional rulers that they should rein in their subjects not to attack officers. If they arrest anything from you, leave them and let them go. Another seizure of note is the interception of 751 pieces of cartridges of live ammunition, carefully arranged with bags of yam powder in Igwara, or your state. A 40-foot container was also intercepted at Amu Ward of in Lagos, while transloading more than 400 bills of second-hand clothing. It was further revealed that the containers were in were three in number on one single declaration. We are on the trail of the remaining two. Red. Within the period under review, which covers three weeks, the customs intercepted 28 different items with duty paid value in the region of 700 million naira, arrested 37 suspects with six already charged to court. In Lagos, Michael Alale, NT News. The Chairman House of Representatives Committee on Nigerian Navy, Yusuf Gadi, has advocated more empowerment drive for the Nigerian Navy to increase the country's revenue generation. Olumide Ikuntola reports that this was at the instance of a maritime security stakeholders meeting in Lagos. Like in some other sectors of the economy, the maritime sector is characterized by a conflict of duties and other challenges amongst allied agencies to change this narrative and fortify the sector for the country's economic gains. House of Representatives Committee on Nigerian Navy was in Lagos to meet with stakeholders to chart the way forward while commending the present administration for prioritizing the security sector. In the 2022 appropriation bill, the Chairman House Committee on Nigerian Navy maintained that with more empowerment and provisions on ground, the Nigerian Navy and other allied agencies will perform effectively. The Constitution, being the supreme book of Nigerian government, donates the sea to the Nigerian Navy. I think other agencies that are operating in our waterways must learn to respect the Nigerian Navy and must equally learn to restrict their responsibility within the provision of their own act. The Chairman as Committee on Nigerian Navy, Yusuf Gachdi, also called for synergy among stakeholders in the sector. The flag officer Western Naiva Command expressed hope that the interaction will bring out areas requiring improvement, enhance effective security network and prosperity of the nation. We have been able to record increased presence at sea, which was made possible through a series of initiatives such as the prompt allocation of petroleum oil lubrication products, availability of ships which enhance our operations. Other points raised at the meeting revolved around the Ministry of Maritime Affairs and Operational Capabilities. In Lagos, Ulum De Gotola, NT News. And that's a bit from Lagos. We'll go on another break. Network News will continue when we return. Do stay. Thanks for joining us. President Muhammadu Buhari felicitates with seasoned journalist and foremost editor 
of the Daily Times, Chief John Onuwasi Araka, on his 70th birthday. The president salutes the renowned journalist and fellow of the Nigeria Guild of Editors for his patriotism and commitment to the ideals of journalism by holding leaders to account and empowering ordinary people with information. The president prays that the almighty God will grant Chief Araka good health and longer life. Medugu is next and Mohammed Ibrahim is standing by. Hello, Mohammed. It's good to see you. Hello, Jumai. Thank you indeed for joining us in Medugui. The need to revitalize and reposition the Nigerian Arabic language village in Gala for optimum performance, especially with the gradual return of peace to Borno State, has again been stressed. Director and Chief Executive Professor Ibrahim Mohammed stated this during opening ceremony of the National Committee of Experts and Stakeholders Engagement organized by the village at its liaison office in Medjugorje. Ted Wajon Jessene reports. The National Committee of Experts and Stakeholders meeting on repositioning and revitalizing the Arabic village in post-insurgency brought together high-profile academicians and scholars of Arabic language from across the African continent, director and chief executive of Nigerian Arabic language village Gala, Professor Ibrahim Mohammed, said the over a decade long insurgency bedeviling the state has disrupted activities of the village, hence the need to garner advices and suggestions to get the village working in full capacity. Having appreciated government at all levels for the peace being enjoyed in the state, Professor Ibrahim Mohammed added that the center will continue to organize workshops and trainings for its staff as well as teachers of Arabic in primary and secondary schools for optimum productivity. At the end of their deliberations, maybe they will come up with something that which if we adopt as Arabic village, maybe it is going to contribute and will go a long way in achieving the mandate of the village. Special guests and other speakers lauded the resilience of the center for standing tall in the wake of the thought of the needed support. Chairman of the committee, Professor Atahir Muhammad Dawood, and Chairman Governing Council, Professor Hassan Jidda, said the village will continue to push for the teaching of Arabic language just like other languages, noting its importance in tourism and other areas of endeavor. The occasion is expected to last for two days. In Maiduguri, Jedwa John Jessini, NTA News. Maiduguri High Court No. 11 has sentenced 18 accused persons arrested at Bagari Hotel in 2019 for conspiracy and management of an illegal group called the Black Movement of Africa. Presiding Judge Justice Father Umar delivered the judgment after reviewing the case. Yagunsu Bukar reports. It could be recalled that the 18 suspects were arraigned before the court in possession of jerry cans containing blood, ATM cards and calabash with liquid substances among others. Hence, their arrest on three count charges contrary to provision of the penal code and executive order assented to 2017. During the two-year period of legal battle, 64 exhibits were tendered as evidence before the court by the prosecution team led by the State Attorney General and Commissioner of Justice, Barrister Kakashi Hulan. Justice Fadao, in his judgment, revealed that the prosecution has proved its case beyond reasonable doubt as required by law in two count charges of conspiracy and management of illegal association, while the second count charge failed, and that the confessions of the accused persons were factually consistent. He disclosed that existence of the society is dangerous to peace, security, and good governance of the state, hence convicting all the accused persons and sentenced them to six years each of two count charge for conspiracy and unlawful management of illegal society to run concurrently. The state attorney general described the verdict as a deterrent to others. This is a very commendable uh, effort on both the side of the prosecution as well as the judiciary. He further revealed that government will continue to read the state of all forms of ritual activities. In Meduguri, Yagum Subuka, NTE News. It's time for another break. Network News continues shortly. Thanks for joining us. And Sports Update is next with Ayodeji Makinde. Ayodeji, what's happening in the world of sports? Many at the moment because we have the, no, the handball league which is ongoing at the Moshuda Dollar National Stadium. Let's begin by telling you that defending men's champion safety shooters of Abuja aim to continue their winning streak at the ongoing National Handball Premier League on Saturday when they take on police machine. 
at the Mashuda Adola National Stadium. In some matches on Saturday, Bayosa Queens and Confluence Queens of Lokoja are involved in the early morning throw-off before Chief of Army Staff Shooter has played Toje Marine Academy. Also, Imo Grasshoppers tackle Defender Babes before Plateau Peacocks take on Safety Babes also of Abuja. Earlier on Friday, Plateau Vipers lost 23-31 to 31 goals to Niger United. Other Rebel Angels held on to beat Defender Babes 30-29 to 29 goals, while Safety Babes cruised to a 27-19 to 19 goals victory over Bayosa Queens. In golf, Nigeria's top golfers Andrew Odo and Sunday Olakwade are optimistic of gathering points in the eight leg Safari Tour series, which tees up, which serves as qualifiers for the European Tour Kenyan Open set to tee off in March 2021. Odo, in an interview with NTA Sports from Nairobi, says he has put the disappointment of a 17th place finish at the fourth leg of the Safari Tour series, which held at Inyali Golf Club in Mombasa, Kenya. And that turns attention to the Ugandan Open in the first week of December. I'm playing some really good golf, but I'm not just getting the results, you know, amazingly. But yeah, it is what it is, and I'm going to regroup myself. Uh, the major goal is really to qualify for the Kenya Open, so I'm going to try and play all the... To football now, Manchester United and Liverpool rekindle old rivalry at Old Trafford in the marquee fixture of March Day 9, with the Red Devils set to cut their point deficit behind league leaders Chelsea in the title race. On Saturday, Norwich City visits Stamford Bridge to play Chelsea in a lunchtime kickoff. Crystal Palace welcome Newcastle United to the Sellers Park, while the NTA will beam live the match between Leeds United and Wolverhampton Wanderers at Elland Road from 2.30 p.m. And that's your sports. It's back to Jumei. Thank you, Ayodeji. President of the Senate, Ahmed Lawan, has commiserated with Senator Philip Aduda and his family members over the death of his father, late Reverend Temimu Samari Aduda, who died on the 28th of October 2021 at 76. Senator Lawan, who was in company of some principal officers of the Senate, paid a condolence visit to the family of the deceased, where he described late Samari Aduda as a man who led a life of service to humanity, as his death is not only for the Aduda family, but also to the Senate in general. service to humanity. Our father was able to bring up a very peaceful family and a genuine contribution to the nation. This indeed is the mark to which we have brought all together as uh, our leader. We have ensured that we have been together in relationship and in togetherness. That's Network News for tonight, but before we go, don't forget to step up, be a star, and join NT against the fight, in the fight against rape and rapist. I am Jomo Yusuf. Do have a great weekend.